All right, I thought I'd give everybody the update on this. It's fixed. There's no more noise, no more issues with valve train, none of that. What we ended up having to do was take the heads off and take the heads to the machine shop and have the valve springs changed. Now these come from Flowtech with a spring that's set up at 120 closed, 310 open. Evidently, that wasn't enough spring pressure for the cam and for the lifters that are in here. It's been the problem the whole time with the noise. What appears it was happening was the lifters were losing contact with the camshaft and every time they would impact back into it, that's the noise we were hearing when you would rev the engine. That has since been changed. The springs are now 150 closed, 380 open. So no more of that, no more noise, none of that. I did convert the block to use an OE style roller lifter for the simple fact they're less than half the price of a link bar lifter. Same lifter, just don't have a little link bar hooking them together. $259.99 versus $620. We converted it. All of that went fine. I had a set of Elgin lifters I was going to put in here. Elgin, supposedly, because, you know, every lifter that's made now for an 87 and up small block and an LS is quote unquote an LS7 lifter. Anyhow. Went to unbox them. Three of them looked like somebody had put a set of vice grips on the roller. So, can't use them. They look like tooling marks, but it would remind you of somebody clamping a set of vice grips on them and digging into them. Couldn't use them. So, I thought, well, now let's see if we can find a set of OE lifters that are actually close to the same seat height as the Morel link bar lifters we had in here, which they were a 2.685. I went with a Howard's Cams 91113 at a 2.676, 9,000 shorter. The heads had to be milled. Aluminum head, it's been on, it's been torqued. It's got head gasket, fire ring impressions in it. It's got to be milled. So they got milled 5 thousandths. 14,000 shorter. That the push rod's going to be down. Well... We get the lifters, we put them in. I asked Cowards, I said, hey, I called them, I said, and I emailed them so I could get see if the two answers uh, coincided with each other. And they did. They said half to three quarters of a turn is where they like to live. I set them at three quarters of a turn of lash. Aluminum head, it's gonna expand. I'm gonna lose about 5,000 preload, so I went to three quarters. Lifters are making noise. I said, well, this ain't going to work. Well, right on the box, it has another part number, MP7717, which is a Morel part number. It's the new number. It used to be 5315, now it's 7717, and then there's another lifter that crosses over to that new number now. So I go look to see what they recommend for a preload on a 7717. Recommended preload is 60 thousandths. Which makes sense. It's a 120 plunger travel lifter. You want to set the plunger about the middle of the travel zone on any hydraulic lifter. That's a good place to put it. So I'm like, well, I'm three quarters of a turn in now. A full turn to the nut, they claim is 42 thousandths. Divided by four, it's 10 and a half. So I'm what, 31 and a half thousandths in. I just gave them another half a turn, put them up to what, 52, 53 thousandths. At that point, they're quiet. There's no noise out of them whatsoever. This engine runs whisper quiet now. There is no noise, no roller rocker noise, which it does have the roller rockers and the, the stud girdles back on it because there was issues with the stamped steel rockers from the get-go. Uh, there were some stock slot rockers that got mixed in with the long slot evidently by the supplier. I didn't catch them. I just started putting them on as I looked at the first three or four rockers, you know, their sets I put on. And all of a sudden, there were some others in there. And when we took them off, we caught the stock slot rockers. Pretty apparent because they were making contact with the rocker studs. Not enough to bend a push rod, not enough to break a rocker, but just enough to make noise. And then there was... I think it was four of them. I think it was four. 
because there was three on one side and one on the other side, so it was four, that the hole for the push rod to feed oil to the rocker to the pivot was not even up on the push rod pocket. It was down on the bend of the rocker arm. And next time I'm out in the garage, I'll get them out and show everybody. But yeah, it's all back together now. If you buy a set of those Howard's 91113 OE Performance Roller Lifters, just go ahead and take them to about 50 thousandths preload, which we had to change push rods because 53 thousandths, then you add another 14 to it. They were a little bit short after preload. The, the rocker wasn't set quite where I wanted it in the center of the valve stem, so we just did a little math, put a longer push rod in it and uh adjusted for it and then it's all fine now but yeah man i can fire this thing up and it is completely quiet because this engine is known for messing with the valves and it'll shut up for a little bit the rockers and then you start it up the next day and it would make noise well that was those stock slot rockers hitting you'd back them off and give them like a quarter turn of lash and they'd kind of shut up for a minute and then they you'd say well so we creep up on it a little more. So you give them a half a turn and they start making noise. Three quarters of a turn, they make more noise. So, but we got everything done and it was quiet. I shut it off and I restarted it and it's going, making a noise again. I'm like, well, that don't quite sound like what it was doing last time. I know the rockers ain't hitting shit. It was a damn distributor cap and rotor. So I took the cap that come on that eBay HEI off, put an MSD cap rotor on it, fixed that. I don't know why it was making noise. There was no signs of the rotor hitting the cap anywhere inside. The cap wasn't cracked, but as soon as I changed it, it quit. So another issue he had was with the dipstick tube. The dipstick tube that goes in this block, the part that enters the engine block, down here that part is actually about five inches long this is a junkyard tube well the dipstick would go in and there's a windage tray in that seven quart pan right where the trap door is at in it and the dipstick tube would go all the way in and it wasn't aligned and then the dipstick would come down and hit and go on top of that windage tray and it wouldn't go through the hole access hole in it to go down into the sump so you could see how much oil you had in there. So I cut this one down to about two inches long, put the dipstick in and it read right. So at that point I ordered a brand new tube because I cut that off. Trying to make a straight shot. I bent it completely straight and figured, well, look, if I shut, if I go this route and I cut it down, the damn dipstick will go in. So what's the deal? So we ended up pulling the pan off, clearance in it. I got the new stick, the new dipsticks right there, new dipstick tube. I just got to bolt it to the head. So I cut it down to two inches too. So now when you pull the dipstick out, like right here, it's not, it's going in. It's no longer going clank, 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 hitting against that windage tray. And now that it's fixed, and yeah, don't make fun of my silicone mess. When I was trying to squeeze the silicone out across that china wall, the tube, the back of it where it's crimped, just exploded in the palm of my hand. And I had like all the tube of silicone in my hand. So I had to dob it on over my finger and make it work. I'll trim it off with a razor blade here after a while or later when I swap brackets out because the new bracket kit, so I can put the air conditioning compressor on there from ICT billet. That's an ICT billet bracket, and so is a power steering pump bracket. This will move the alternator to that side, and the AC compressor will go on this side, and it's got the same power steering pump bracket in the kit that's already on it, so I don't need to change that. That way, the alternator will now run instead off this outer groove. It'll run off of this one. AC compressor will run off this one and the very back groove on the crankshaft will go directly to the power steering pump and no longer go around the water pump. So that'll take care of that. I also put a set of steel braided dash six transmission cooling lines on the hydro boost 
I used vibrant hose and vibrant fittings and for some reason that fitting right there it kept when you would hit the stop on the steering and the power steering pump would tell you hey you're against the stop dummy it would blow the hose out of the fitting so I ordered them from advanced adapters that's the exact same set that I've got on the S10 so no longer blowing hoses out I've just got to route them around a little better so that works and then I've got to redo those two brake lines right there those are just temporary one of them as you can see is all bent because when I would set up here I would set on the core support and put my feet down here on the frame rails when I put the heads back on the intake and all that it was easier on me to do it than leaning over this thing and I leaned my knee over there and just bent those all to hell so I just pushed them out of the way so I got to redo them I got some new line I'll redo them, put some coils in them, and put them over against the fender or back underneath the master and down around the steering column and rerun them down to each front uh, frame fitting where the soft hoses are at to where these hoses are. Yeah, there's the valve springs that were on it, matter of fact. They got rusty because they got rained on in the back of the truck in the box. I really don't care. They're paperweights at this point. And there's two of the rockers. As you can see, there's a long slot. There's a stock slot. And what I was talking about on that push rod, the oil holes, you see how these are. Some of them, the hole was right down here, right at the end of that darker part, right in here. And all the oil would run down the back of the rocker and it made it appear like we had an oiling issue when we didn't. So, and even the long slots, you can see where they were making contact. But, anyhow. And these are some ugly ass rocker arms. I mean, look at that. That's just horrible. But all the shorties, stock slot ones are pretty decent looking, but all the long slot ones were just ugly shape look like a warped up taco shell also put a lift shackle on it to level the truck but it serves another purpose the axle had negative caster now it's got five degrees positive caster and the there's no binding right there so I'm not going to worry about shimming it because then it'll just take the caster right back out of it they came with a five degree shim but they're aluminum cast aluminum uh uh not using them I put them in before and had them crack and break and come out. Nope. Not doing it. So now I can get the back bumper on the truck. Get the little wing pieces that go up here back on. Well, or on it. At some point this bumper is going to come off. I actually bought a back bumper that I really like. I think it's for a... I think it's a... 07 to 13 truck but I'm going to add to it back here for the angle because OBS is front end curved and I'm going to put the winch right in the license plate hole I'll go ahead and keep the receiver hitch I put in the front of it because it's it's in there <laughs> it's all in there with quarter inch plate and gussets and everything and it'll come in handy if I need to pull backwards or whatever I have a thing for pulling people out of the ditch in the winter time. There's no need to call a tow truck. I'll just snap you out and hand sit and get you on your way. There's no need to call a wrecker and spend money you don't have. So, if you're in the ditch and I see you, you see this truck, wave me down, I'll pull you out. Uh, we put the gas tank under the truck. It's no longer in the toolbox. It's a tank from Tanks Inc. And it's got a aeromotive carbureted billet fuel pump on it that's actually just a nipple then the pump and then I made a bracket to support the pump with a piece of rubber uh, I don't want to get dirty or I crawl underneath there I got to go grab my other trailer and go down to Warrensburg Missouri and get my daughter's car and bring it back up here and fix it 
damn all-wheel drive Nissan Murano alternator went on it and you got to pull the radiator and the fans and the battery box and all this shit to get the alternator out and I just easier for me to bring it here and then they can come up and get it when I get it fixed and that trailer back there is blocked in my 20-foot tilt so I'm just gonna go grab my other one but I don't know if I got the keys with me or not. I might. Oh, I do have the keys. Here, I'll start it. No more tack, 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 tack. And my board for bleed the brakes. If it'll start, it might be close to being out of gas. No more noise. Listen over here, and it'd be like tack 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 tack. Now keep in mind, I ain't even set the timing on it or nothing. I ain't messed with it. I did the did the heads and shit two Saturdays ago, and I ain't time to mess with it. So wherever I stack the distributor, that's where it's running at. I mean, it's got a little bit of a cam in it, but. Not that much. And it's got plenty of plenty of oil pressure. Zippy enough it'll make the belt squeal. But as you can see, there's no more valve train noise. In the machine shop, he was like, 120 and 310, he said, they shouldn't be losing contact with the cam. Well, they were losing contact with the cam. Because that noise is gone, and I know that noise. I've experienced it before. So, there you go, everybody. There's you an update on it. It's fixed. I just got to set the timing, make sure the fluids are all full. And I know the oil's full. But make sure the radiator's topped off, tidy up the engine bay. Then I can get to work, like I said, putting that bumper and stuff, back bumper on it. And once that's done, I'll drive it, which I'll probably get that done this weekend. Today's Friday, so kind of had to hold off on taking a heads up or two because uh, eight weeks ago today to the day, the machine shop owner, who's a good friend of mine and my wife's and my son's, uh, he had quadruple bypass, kind of an emergency situation. So we kind of held off on, on uh, taking the heads up there until uh, things kind of calmed down because they got buried when he went down. So there you go, everybody. Stay safe. God bless. Later.